Here we are. The day I finally have the emotional and physical energy to talk about this story and there is unannounced construction going on at 8.30 a.m. So sorry if there's a little bit of background noise, but I just, I just have to do this now. So to tell this story, I feel like I have to start at the beginning, which starts with this journal entry. You're kidding. This is when I was living in Montana as a news reporter for ABC. But my future is in LA, at BuzzFeed. I honestly feel my future there. That's where I fit professionally, like my skills and interests and personality wise. I am dedicating my time and thought to being there. I am so determined to be there. I'm going to hit the ground running once I get there. I moved back to LA, applied for a lot of jobs, including Buzzfeed, and I got an interview. I had been messaging people I didn't know on LinkedIn, making Buzzfeed-esque videos to put on my YouTube channel. And so I got this interview and I absolutely blew it. It was the worst interview I've ever given and I did not get hired. Essentially, I just walked in there and gave them everything I thought they wanted me to be. And it was like the least authentic, try hard moment I've ever had. Uh, and they saw right through it and I wasn't a good fit. And when I got the email that I did not get it, I was between double shifts working as a server at CPK. I really and truly in that moment was like, okay, it's just not now. I'm just not ready yet. But I still was like, I'm gonna work there. Like I've never just known anything like I knew that. Three more months later, I applied again and I got another interview and I went in and I was, I was just me and I got in. They really don't hire people anymore the way that they used to hire people, especially as a video producer. After your six month internship, you can apply to be in the three month fellowship where you're still not a full-time employee exactly. You're not like salaried. Then I spent the three month fellowship. <laughs> Shout out to Devin Lytle and Ned Fulmer who I had, no fucking joke, three pages, eight by 11 typed out pages of ideas and I put time on their calendars and they sat with me and they went through every single idea with me which looking back is <laughs> a ridiculous insane thing to do too but it was so nice and I'm so grateful to them for that long story short the fellowship ended up going really well for me and I was one of two people hired into a full-time position I I'd been a bit unhappy at BuzzFeed for a while due to no fault of their own, honestly. It was my fucking dream to work there and I did it and it is one of the proudest things of my life. And quite honestly, it's the only thing that I've ever been perfectly and utterly sure of. Like I feel about working at Buzzfeed, the way that people talk about finding their soulmate where they're like, when you know, you know. And with Buzzfeed, like I just knew. And you probably shouldn't like revere and love a company like that. Like it's a company for profit that will cut you off at the knees in order to make money. Uh, but that is just how I felt about it. In the last year or two, like really since I guess the pandemic, I have become kind of complacent in that work. I've spent a long time over the last few year years journaling about what kind of thing I can make and focus on that would make me feel fulfilled and like I'm doing something good for the world or the community through Buzzfeed and I've been having a really hard time finding that thing. Let's get into some of the questions that you guys sent in through Instagram. What made you leave? Why did you leave? Was it your decision to leave or you got kicked to the curb? <laughs> Brutal. It was not my decision to leave. It's actually hilarious. I woke up one morning at 7.30 a.m. to go to the gym and I looked at my calendar to see what's up for the day and I had this meeting from HR and the head of video. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't see this. Well, I can't meet at this time. I'm busy at that time, picking up equipment for a shoot tomorrow. So I spent a couple minutes looking for a new meeting time and I was gonna email them all and go, oh, I can't meet at this time. <laughs> Let's choose a different time, which would have been a hysterical response. Like, this doesn't work for me. Can you fire me a different time? And then I just started thinking, why do the heads of HR and the head of video wanna meet with me? Oh no, I've seen this before several times. I was laid off as part of 1.7% of the company being laid off. You know, BuzzFeed went public recently. They're trying to keep their numbers down. I was told that it was not at all personal or based off of my work, which I would like to believe. So no, 
not my choice, but ultimately a good thing. We'll get into that. What do you do for a living now? I have always, always, always said that if I was not producing videos for BuzzFeed, I wouldn't want to produce videos. My urge and instinct to make internet videos was for them and for that kind of content. And then the spark died and I have said what I wanted to say and I don't want to do that anymore. Several questions about was it toxic? Is it a toxic work environment? It seems like so many people leave. In some ways, yes, in some ways, no. I think that people of color and other minorities in the company have expressed unhappiness and difficulties working there that I didn't experience. Obviously not saying that like, so it didn't really happen. I'm just saying I had a fine time there, but that doesn't mean that it wasn't a toxic work environment. I just didn't experience. So I'd say for me in general, no, it was not a toxic work environment. <laughs> Did everyone fuck? <laughs> I think in like OG BuzzFeed days, it was way, way, way more prevalent and there was a lot of that going on. And there's definitely people who have like gotten together and are in long-term relationships because of meeting at BuzzFeed. There was a bit of commingling. Yeah. What's your big dream for the future? This is how I generally feel about the future. Huh. Since my cancer diagnosis, which was four years ago today, you clap for a cancer diagnosis? Since that, my feelings and understandings about my life and my goals has changed a ton. Beep beep. I don't feel yet drawn to one dream or one purpose. It's actually deeply, deeply hilarious and ironic that I made the bucket list video where I completed my bucket list and I made the video about losing all of my hair and wearing a bald cap for a day to test out my identity and femininity and confidence without my hair. I made all of those videos before my diagnosis. Sometimes people lose all their hair and it's not their choice, whether it be alopecia or sexual trauma or chemo. As morbid as it sounds, nobody knows when they're gonna die. There is no ready. There is no such thing as ready. There's only such a thing as right here and right now. I made a new bucket list. After cancer, I tried to pursue a pilot with BuzzFeed about doing your bucket list. And they asked me to write down some big, exciting things that I would want to be in a pilot. And I found that doing big, cool things sounds big and cool and exciting. But ultimately, at the end of my life, like when I faced death, I didn't really care about skydiving or swimming with sharks. I just cared about being with my family. And when I sat down to write a new bucket list, I was like, make a chicken with my mom, play basketball again with my dad. Like, very small, wholesome things that are not good for a TV series. Um, and I gave up on the idea because it didn't feel authentic to me anymore. What are my big dreams for the future? Right now, I just still feel like be healthy, be happy, laugh, spend it with people that I love. Sorry if that's a lame answer, but that's like all that really matters to me at the end of the day. What was your favorite memory from BuzzFeed? Oh man, where do I start? Being on set as an intern and a fellow for big, exciting projects with OG BuzzFeed people like the Try Guys and the Unsolved Boys and Ashley Perez. Every moment with my intern class, I have so many Snapchats and Instagram stories of just fucking around was the best part. Goes back to like my big dream, being with people that I love and enjoy. Like, like am I proud of the things I've made? God, yes, yes. But when I think about Buzzfeed, I just think about being done with my friends. Where are you going? Where are you going to get your snacks now? What a brilliant question. That's probably the biggest loss in all of this is the canteen. What was your favorite and least favorite video you filmed? I mean, least favorite, you could probably call it like any of them that didn't do very well. Any of my queer content, the lesbian video that I made recently, 19 questions newly out lesbians have for experienced lesbians. I did that frame, but with trans women recently, those are just some that stand out to me. Will you still be uploading on YouTube on your own channel? Honestly, that's not exactly my plan. This might just kind of be a one and done kind of thing. I really, really, really don't want my life to become, wait, don't touch the food because I have to take a pretty picture of it first. No, 
judgment to those people because I love seeing your content. I just, I don't take videos at the concert. I just, I want to be here for it all. If I could find a way to do YouTube in a way that inspired me and didn't make me feel like I had to record my whole life, then sure, maybe I will. If you guys want to let me know what you want to see, I'll think about it. Are you scared of what the future holds? Sure, who isn't? But that's exactly why I got this shitty tattoo to remind me to lean into that fear because more often than not, it's just a signal for something big and we're never really ready for anything. We just have to lean into it. I really am just trusting that this confusion and seemingly lostness is an open space to guide me toward a new kind of knowing. And in the meantime, I'm just freaking, I'm freaking here, man. I'm just going, I don't know. It's been a great time so far. Let's we'll see what's next. Thank you for watching. I don't have a sign off, I'm new. It was a great time, I don't regret anything. See you later, maybe not, I don't know.